Hey, I'm Dave Watkins, Watkins Films. What I have here is a limited collector's edition slipbox version of the 2020 sci-fi horror film Possessor. Now, this was a first-time watch for me. I'd never seen the movie before, and I gotta tell you, I was pretty impressed with it. As a matter of fact, I watched the whole film in one sitting. A couple of times I was about to get up to go do something else briefly, but then something would happen on screen that would catch my attention. It's very well plotted. Before the mo before this video is over, I'm going to rate this movie with a, a star system. One star being the lowest and five star being the highest. But right now I want to go ahead and we're going to rate this packaging. And I'm going to give it a five. Because I'm very impressed, first off, by the poster. When I saw this poster... I was like, what is going on with this movie? What is this movie about? And it really drew my attention. It's very striking. It drew my attention to the film and made me look it up and, and see what was going on with it. The original poster looked more like this. Uh, it, and I, I don't like this nearly as much as this. Uh, also, you know, some people might not like this thick of a, of a box for just one movie. Now, Second Sight Films does a very good job with these. But some people don't like them because they take up a lot of space on the shelves. But personally, I kind of like them kind of thick. You know, <laughs> The film was directed by Brandon Cronenberg, who you probably are more familiar with his famous dad, David Cronenberg, who directed movies like Shivers and Dead Ringers, and also The Fly and Scanners. I don't have a copy of Scanners. Uh, I probably should have one, but I don't. He also appears as an actor in the movie Nightbreed, he plays the psychiatrist who, and spoilers, he turns out to be the uh, serial killer in the film, this guy here. Um, he also appears on screen as an actor in the film Jason X, and you know, Jason in Space. He, he appears in the opening scene of that film. But his son, Brandon, here directs a fairly visual movie. It's a very effective movie. Um, it's, it is thought-provoking, provocative, but it is also very entertaining. Uh, there is a lot of violence in this movie. It, the violence is sporadic, but when it happens, it is very graphic and gruesome and bloody. So it leaves a, an impression. And um, there's also there's a pretty good bit of nudity. No, there's not a lot of nudity, but there is nudity in this film with male and female nudity and some sex scenes that are that work within the film without being exploited exploitation so real quick about the plot here now this is uh it's a little complicated it's some science fiction technology which which it could possibly be real and i hope it it isn't real but this uh company has this this machine that people they are able to hire them to assassinate somebody and they were able to get their assassin they put them in the machine and they're able to change their consciousness with someone else in the person who they want to kill's life so they do this through implanting a chip into the other person's brain, and then they're able to switch their consciousnesses out. So then the assassin's able to get into the person's life and eventually assassinate them. And to get back out, they have to kill themselves. Um, but this becomes kind of problematic in some parts of the movie. Now, the opening sequence of this movie is very interesting, and it looks different than the rest of the movie. It's very vivid in the colors, and it's very it kind of pops, and all, all the shots are very... The 4K here, look, this is a newer movie, but the 4K here looks amazing. It looked, it looked like awesome on my screen, especially this opening sequence. A lot of the rest of the movie is intentionally darker, and the colors are not as not as bright. It's more drab, but this opening thing, and then so you got the host already in someone else's body, which you don't know what's, exactly what's going on, on at first, but it kind of follows her walking through different um, different um, places until she finds the person she needs to assassinate, and she kills him, and then she goes to kill herself, and she has a hard time doing this, and they end up, the cops end up shooting her instead. The main character, played by Andrea Risboro, is this assassin who who goes into these people's bodies and and goes and does their work. Now, um, Jennifer Jason Lee plays her boss, um, who who is a concerned that she has too many human attachments, as she's as a a husband and a kid and she's concerned she has too many human attachments in her life that's causing her not to be as good of an assassin as she can be she's also this machine and the whole process is giving her neurological uh, problems that's displayed throughout now a lot of the movie andrea um rice Bur burrow is not on screen she actually switches place with her 
her host, um, played by Christopher Abbott, and it spends most of the movie with him. With it's her controlling his body as he goes through what what becomes like the assassination that she's trying to do, and so. But then at the same, at the same time, you occasionally will see her, but she's off screen for a lot of the movie. But they both Christopher Abbott and Andrea Riceborough do a terrific jobs on their parts. Uh, Sean Bean also is in the movie. He doesn't. He's not in the movie a lot, but he he does he does have a fairly important part. He is the the intended target. Who he has some screen time, but it's not that much. But it, I think it's important to have a, a like a, for that particular character. It was important to have a, a well-known person playing that character. I think it helps with that part. I don't want to give away a lot of the plot, but I, I think this is a very engrossing movie, and it's interesting to see what happens through through this system and what what a lot of times you don't know what the the main character is thinking in these situations. She seems to be very. At, at the beginning of the film, she seems to be leaning more towards this family situation and maybe getting out of it. But as it, as it progresses, it seems like maybe she's very focused on the assassination and continuing that type of work. And so there is a, a conflict going on with that character. And sometimes you don't know where if the, the host, um, Christopher Abbott's character, is able to regain his control. Sometimes it's hard to tell if if he's in control or if she's in control. So it's very it's very engrossing film. Um, I, I would highly recommend it. Uh, and before we get into the rating part of this, I want to just crack open this and I want to show you what's in this other than the, you know the awesome outside cover. But it does have it does have um, some some cards which we'll take a look at in just a minute. There is a very impressive booklet in here um, with lots of lots of information about the film and pictures and whatnot. Here's the, the disc. There is a Blu-ray and a 4K disc. The Blu-ray is Region B, so you have to have a Region B player in order, order to play that. The uh, 4K is region free, so you can play it on you know, any, any player for the most part, as far as I know. So here, let's take a look at these cards real quick. So there's that's another one of the poster. Here is, um, here, this is an odd thing that happens later in the movie. And it's just a lot of really like different types of posters. This is Andrea Riceborough's character, Christopher Abbott's character. All right, now let's rate this thing. But this is a newer movie, so, and I haven't had that much time to think about it. But just my first impression of this, I'm going to rate it a four out of five stars. We'll see how that goes over time. But I was very captivated by the whole film. Let me know your thoughts on it if you want to write something about it in the in the messages below. Uh, I'm Dave Watkins. Thanks for watching. If you could like this video and do all that subscribing stuff, I know you're just going to love to do. Thanks. Mm -hmm.